soir, on est en France et on est français, mais we decided we're going to speak English tonight because people will be watching from several different countries. You, what you just heard, oh, but before I start, I must introduce uh, Samuel Bore. And Samuel, tell people a little bit about how we got to know each other and the projects we've done together before. Bonsoir. Uh, forgive my very bad English. <laughs> uh, mon anglais très, très, très mauvais. Um, I think we met the first time in uh, 2012. Um, I'm artistic co-director of a um, musical group, uh, Ensemble Fronde in Le Mans. And um, we, we have uh, I invited you uh, many times in Le Mans, in, uh, in La Fonderie, the, the place we, where we, we are working. And um, made uh, some concerts and lectures uh, with you. Uh, which uh, have been uh, successful. Um, we commissioned uh, a new piece, um, the Seven oh, Sexes, yeah. yeah, the Sex Sexual, um, uh, for the 77 ans, uh, your um, 77th birthday. <laughs> uh, and it was played um, many times in Le Mans, in um, Rennes, uh, Saint Nazaire, and uh, Alençon, and so on. Um, so, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a pianist, I, I play often your, your, your music, your, your, your piano music. Um, for example, um, and how for piano, um, chord catalog, uh, count and keys, and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. and I, I like your, your music. <laughs> <laughs> Good. He, he's very modest. He forgot to, to mention he's a wonderful piano player. Oh. <laughs> and uh, he's played, uh, he's one of the few people in the world who can play the chord catalog, uh, which uh, takes a lot of work. Um, they we're here tonight to present the first, for the first time, uh, 12 years later, which is a piece of 2020, but it, it comes from a piece that was 12 years earlier, which was called uh, 12. <clears throat> and in fact, you heard one movement from this as the introduction. But what you didn't know is that what you were hearing is a uh, block design, a mathematical structure, which is, uh, you can't figure it out yourself, but a good mathematician can do it. You ju all you have to do to make a 12-4-3 block design is pick 12 elements, put them in blocks of four, such that two elements appear in uh, three different blocks. Did you get that? Uh, if not, uh, let's put it in musical terms. You take the 12 notes, you put them in four note chords, such that each two, each pair of notes appears in three different chords. And that's how, in order to solve this problem, you have to have a system of 33 chords, and that's what you were listening to just at the beginning. Chunk, 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 all around the circle. And by the end, you had heard each note 11 times. You heard the 33 chords to complete this block design. And you heard each pair of notes um, three times in one of these chords. And that's kind of amazing symmetry for me. And this is what got me interested in wanting to write music that came directly from these uh, block designs. Of course, people know, think they know 12 tone music uh, as something that was invented by uh, Arnold Schoenberg uh, 100 years ago. Uh, it was a big movement for a while, increased its volume until um, the 60s, 70s, when it kind of uh, peaked out with uh, the, the best works of the movement by uh, probably by uh, Nono and Stockhausen. But then it kind of declined. And in the 21st century, I don't know a single composer who is still writing serial music. That Schoenberg tradition was serial 12 tone music. What I'm doing is 1243 block design music. Now that you know a little bit about how this piece music was created, and maybe you can appreciate the mathematics, 
And we're going to play it again. And this time you can try to hear that with each three chords, tum tum dunk, you have heard all 12 notes once. And then with the next measure, tum tum dunk, you've heard all 12 notes in another way. Play it again. Sam? <laughs> <laughs> three chords left over, we had to put them at the end. Uh, the next piece, the first piece, now we're doing 12 years later. Oops. And this one is called, uh, here it is, Originals and Copies. This is a 12-4-3 block design also, but uh, quite different than the simple design you saw before. In this case, you're just looking at the pairs of notes, uh, and the three pairs in the middle, middle are particularly important, 2-6, 1-5, and 3-4. And each one, they make, that makes three chords, 2-6-1-5, 1-5-3-4, and 3-4-2-6. And if you follow the red line, you can find that one, five, three, four uh, repeats itself here with one, four, three, five. But if you follow the long line, it also goes up here through other pair, 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 and bigger. One, three, four, five. The same chord. It's just the pairs are different. The, if you follow the green lines or the blue lines, you find two other chords, uh, originals, that go to two copies. And that's what this piece is about, that uh, Simon's going to play now. You're going to hear chord, first copy, chord longer, route right to the second copy. Second chord, first copy. Second chord, second copy, etc. Similarity between the uh, originals and the copies. Uh, many people think they don't want to hear explanation about music, they just want to hear music. But I've always found that I appreciate music a little better if I understand a little bit about how it was composed. And that's why, especially with my music, I like to try to explain a little bit. The next piece is called Samson's Solution because it came from a uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, it's this one. From an English mathematician named Paul Sampson and he found this solution it's another 12 4 3 block design with 22 chords on the outside and uh, 11 blue chords on the inside. We're going to start by listening to the, the red chords on the outside 
uh, each of which contains note 11, which is the highest note. We don't always count 1 to 12. Sometimes it's 0 to 11 in this case. Um, so you hear uh, 11 uh, chords that have the 11, that has the high notes on top. Then we hear the uh, blue chords in the middle where there's no common tones between one chord and another. It jumps, jump, 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 jump. And then to end, we hear the green chords around the outside where there's one note in common with each chord. So you hear between one chord and the other the common tone. harmonies. Paul Denny, a mathematician in New Zealand, sent me a block design a long time ago where it's possible to make, uh, in many ways, three chords with only six notes. Each one of these triangles is a case where three of the chords uh, happen with only six notes. Sometimes a chord will occur in two or three groups, but uh, the chords when you have the notes repeated like that, it's kind of dense uh, harmony. And I decided to put it on a dense scale. Usually I prefer scales um, where, the, where the notes are rather uh, far uh, apart, then you get to not so many uh, close clusters and more the notes are more spaced. But in this case, I decided to stack them all into one octave, and that's why the harmonies uh, get very close. By the way, the, it's very important uh, when you just try to translate numbers into notes, you better think about the scale because that's going to give you the sound that you're going to have. And in this we have a special sound which is very good for close harmonies. put a few of the chords at the end in just groups of two uh, and one because they didn't fit into groups of three. And we wanted all 33 chords to be represented. The uh, next piece is called 11 times 3. I asked uh, a combinatorialist, block design specialist in London named Leonard Seutcher, who helped me a lot with uh, this recent work in 2020. He uh, I asked him, uh, is there a way that I can take one pair of notes and then do the three pairs that go with them, and then another pair of notes and the three pairs that go with them, and continue this 11 times until I have had all 33 chords. 
in a nice, neat bundle. Well, he has a lot of experience, and the next day, he sent it to me. And this is the music that came out. The same, the same notes are, are sustained, and the, the other notes, the added notes are short. with the old uh, 12 tone music uh, the old 12 tone music was much more free because you could put F sharp in any octave you wanted and you could repeat notes as many times as you wanted and you could cheat uh, as, as much as you wanted it was pretty flexible uh, if you want to really work with numbers in a serious way as I do uh, it's a very rigorous art and you want like in this case exactly 33 chords uh, you know octave changes, and everything is uh, quite precise if you want to follow the numbers and uh, be serious about it. Um, another uh, piece that I find very serious is uh, called Tremulos, and this comes from a uh, problem. Uh, Leonard Seutcher told me that there's no way to do a 12, 4, 3 block is on such that the 33 chords can be put in a line where it's just one note changing with each new chord. But um, Frank Yatsevsky, an old friend and a colleague who, uh, who wrote recently Heterotopie Musicale, very good book, very uh, serious for musical uh, mathematics. Uh, he's not a bot design specialist, but he did one for me. And he couldn't, uh, Sorcher was right, he couldn't do all 33 chords in uh, one by one like that. But he got, got 22 chords uh, in a way that uh, could change just one note at a time until you got to this 22. It's only 22 of the 33 chords, but it seems like a complete system because it's all the possibilities you could do with that. And uh, it's very nice to hear these chords as tremulos because they just change one note at a time. They kind of morph into one another. <laughs>
The music sounds easy when you hear it well <coughs> like that, but I have a feeling that Samuel probably worked harder on that piece yeah. than on most of the others <laughs> to get it so subtle that it changes so even and subtle. Um, beautiful work. Uh, the next piece comes from the standard book, sort of the encyclopedia of combinatorial design. It's called the Handbook of Combinatorial Design by um, Denitzen Goldborn. It's a thousand page book with um, uh, contributions from about 50 mathematicians all over the world. One uh, uh, design, uh, the main design that he gives in this book as an example, is uh, uh, a, a set like the uh, like the first one in 12, where you get sets of all 12 notes in three chords, one after <laughs> the other after the other. Um, but I decided to take these and just listen to one note at a time and make melodies of 12 notes. So each melody uh, has 12 notes, three chords. But uh, I love uh, Louis Couperin, and uh, so does Samuel. Uh, Samuel, tell us about uh, this 17th century composer and how this, this uh, 20th, 21st century music is going to relate to him. Yeah. Louis Couperin. Uh, The oncle, uh, I think it was the uncle uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the, of the great Couperin le Grand. But uh, Couperin le Grand, uh, moi je pense c'est Louis le Grand vraiment. Yeah, I, for me yeah, too. I prefer uh, Louis Couperin. It's a uh, very free music, very very fantastic uh, and uh, very special. Uh, and I like to play Louis Couperin at uh, at Cembalo. And you made uh, an, a, a tribute to to, to Louis Couperin. Uh, and it, it, it sounds like a dodecaphonic unmeasured prelude, a uh, prelude mesuré dodecaphonic, a prelude non mesuré dodecaphonic. Well put. <laughs>
you just hold the notes down like a good harpsichord player uh, when they're supposed to be held down and let them uh, move into the next note, into the next note, and then you end the phrase where uh, always the notes all seem to resolve into one chord, uh, the way uh, uh, Louis Couperin did it. And it works pretty well on piano, I think. The next piece is, uh, uh, comes from a block that I didn't, I didn't know quite what to do with. And I thought, well, I'm not sure what the logic really is. Why don't I just take the chords, start with the lowest one and end with the highest one, and uh, do them in sequential order the way they, um, they come off the computer. And I found out that the last chord came twice. I said, there must be a mistake. I looked at my program. No, it was not a mistake. And then I realized this is uh, a block design of uh, Ted Spence, a mathematician in Glasgow, who uh, thinks that it's okay to make a block design with one repeated chord, as long as the, the um, pairs arrive three times, uh, as they're supposed to and everything. And uh, I realized that this was expressed. And it, it was curious that the one repeated chord happened to be the highest chord, and uh, it made a very nice ending, which seemed to be the destiny of this piece, which I call Rising with Spence. ordinary chords, four note chords, combinations of notes according to uh, a mathematical formula. But you've probably never heard any of these chords before. There's so many combinations possible. And I find that uh, mathematics can open us up to so many new sounds. Um, and that's one of the things that excites me the most about working in this way. Now we're going to do uh, something that is uh, um, due to uh, Leonard Seutcher again. Uh, he makes block designs often with permutations. If you do the right permutation, you can permute one block into another block and uh, continue doing this. And every block in the block design will permute to another block in the block design. And finally, you can uh, permute uh, all 33 blocks, one with the other. Um, I did this in three different ways in the following piece. Uh, first of all, I took a, uh, a Seutcher permutation that was just pairs of notes. One permutes to two, permutes to one, three permutes to four, permutes to three, and so forth. And uh, the second one is it goes in cycles of three, one permutes to two, permutes to three, permutes to one, and so forth. And the next one uh, it goes in cycles of four. So you get uh, very chromatic, uh, uh, simple changes in the first piece, cycles of three in the second piece, and cycles of four in the third piece. 
And I changed the scale with each movement uh, so that you could hear a little better the um, individual voices moving through their cycles. this before, but I have a feeling tonight that you play this piece with more rubato than you usually do. Oh, no. Thank you. No. Something about that chromatic harmony that wants to make a little no. nuances, don't you think? 
You weren't conscious of that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, anyway, lots of, that's, lots of things that are, we're unconscious of in music. And I don't know if the listeners were hearing that or, or not. Now we're going to do another permutation, which is quite different. And this came from Seutcher also, but this time, he sent me one permutation, 12 numbers long. Uh, exactly 1, 7, 9, 2, 8, 10, 3, 5, 11, 4, 6, 12. And 12 permutes back to 1, and you can, it's a circle. So you can look at this uh, 12 numbers as a 12 tone row, but it's not a 12 tone row at all. It's a permutation series. And these uh, notes are going to permute according to that uh, series. Um, and he wanted to make that as clear as possible, so I, I make it a canon. Everybody starts with note one, but they don't start at the same time. You know, uh, four, when the four voices, the fourth voice enters, you're going to have a four note chord because they're set up so that they start at the right time. Um, we're going to hear uh, after the fourth voice comes in, the pedal goes down so that you can hear chord by chord. And after 12 chords, we do another canon that leads to 12 more chords, another canon that leads to six more chords, and then another canon that leads to the remaining three chords, 12 plus 12 plus six plus three, and voila, 33 chords. <laughs> the blocks in uh, cycles of, of four uh, exactly da da dee dum but then there's another uh, cycle da da dee da and a third cycle on another transposition and I did this in uh, three different ways the first way uh, I uh, let you hear it's just three chords that repeat over and over but I sort of insert the melodies to help you hear that within these three chords you're just hearing uh, these da da di da melodies circulating uh, against one another. It's like the round. Uh, yeah. yeah. But the kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope, yeah. Uh, good good uh, analogy. Uh, 
So I explain four cycle B as well, and we'll do this all as one set. The second part of this, uh, is four, uh, which we call four cycle B, is just the, the chords without uh, uh, paying too much attention to the uh, da da di da themes. Uh, you can hear those within the chords if you listen carefully. And then in four cycle C, uh, I just put the chords in a numerical order just so that you can uh, listen to the chords uh, for their own sonority and uh, without worrying about the counterpoint, which isn't there anymore. Uh, and though that this time in four cycle C, uh, Samuel plays them with a different uh, rhythm, which makes them, I think, easier to hear as sonorities.
could hear the music of the spheres that they thought in the Middle Ages was music out there because the planets were rotating in perfect synchronization, making uh, music as they, as they rotated. And um, they imagined that this music was out there uh, making the earth go around. Uh, it's a nice idea, but I never could hear it. But sometimes, like in the, this last piece, I think I'm hearing music from the mathematical spheres. Those mathematics are out there. That's part of the natural world, just as much as oxygen and uh, earthworms and, and flowers. Uh, they're out there. Those mathematics are, are turning around out there somewhere and are making music. Um, mathematical spheres. Anyway, just something to think about. Uh, we have a visual aid again for the next piece, which uh, I call Soul Changes. We start with uh, uh, this chord. I think it's a Oh, 110, uh, 11, 12 is here. And then we go to this chord, which is quite different, and then to this chord, which uh, is quite different. And then we go to this one, this one, and this one, this one, this one, and this one. You'll notice the 12 is always in the center circle. So there's always the high note, 12, in the beginning, uh, in the first and last chord of each uh, three chord measure. Um, the, as the chords go, uh, there's always two notes in common. One in ten is, is retained here, and then uh, seven and six is retained here, and then uh, seven and nine is retained here, and then four and nine is retained here, as the lines show. So it's just slipping a little bit, just moving a couple notes at a time as we go uh, gradually around the circle in slow changes. Jesse sent me another block design which in, permits us to listen to the 33 chords uh, without ever having a note repetition from one chord to the next. It's always four new notes, four new notes, four new notes. Uh, and um, for reasons that you will probably hear, we call the piece flip flop. composition teacher was Morton Feldman, with whom I worked for a year, uh, just after finishing the Yale School of Music. And uh, he was uh, very different from me in the sense that he didn't like systems at all. He wanted to, the only way to write music is sit down at the piano and listen, 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 and then, until it sounds right, and then write it down. And uh, 
don't ever try to systematize. Well, um, I worked the way he wanted me to for a while, but uh, I had my instinct was to go back to system. I had to know what I was doing and analyze what I was doing. I had an analytical mind somehow. And uh, he told me later, I knew you were going to do it, but uh, I, it was good for you to work just by ear for a while. And sometimes it's still good for me just to work by ear. So I decided to write two uh, pieces with uh, which I call by ear one and by ear two. I just took a block design I didn't know what to do with and just sat at the piano the way Felder did and just listened, listened, listened. And I found that uh, uh, the chords seemed to fall into groups of four that sounded kind of similar, went together. And then another group of three that sounded similar, went together. And I ended up with a group of four and a group of four and a group of three. A group of four and a group of three, four and a group of three. A group of four and a group of four and a group of three. And that made 33 chords. And uh, uh, the grouping seemed to make sense. It was just by ear, but it worked as a block design, as a 33 chord block design, a 12, 4, 3 block design. But then I thought, uh, but would this work if I changed the scale? So I took exactly the same numbers and wrote it out on another scale, and that gives us by ear two, and uh, which you'll see are the groupings as convincing in the second piece as in the first piece? We'll see. But tell me, uh, by ear, um, the opening of uh, this piece reminds me of a very famous French. <laughs> not conscious on my part. I, I did, did those three chords, but maybe that's why those three chords went, to, well, those four chords went together, because uh, unconsciously I was hearing Beethoven. My year two doesn't have the Beethoven, but I think I like it better. <laughs> it's a nicer scale. And I think the groupings still work. Yeah. Uh, the groups of four seem to fit together. The next movement is called uh, Quasi Diminished. And uh, this is another um, set of permutations that came from Seutcher, uh, four cycle permutations. Um, but I. Um, set the scale with four diminished chords and uh, uh, with a major second between one and, and, the, and the next diminished seventh. Um, and it gets 
You don't hear real diminished sevenths until the very end, but it kind of has a quasi-diminished sound uh, the whole time. And uh, lovely chords come off of this scale. Almost any uh, numbers you plug into it. Uh, let's listen to quasi-diminished. That time we got four um, major phrases, uh, seven times, plus two chords that came together, plus the three diminished sevenths, and we got uh, 33 chords that way. Um, there's quite a few other pieces that we're not going to present tonight, but I think we thought this is enough for the first evening. Uh, the complete edition, we hope, will be available in uh, two or three weeks. Um, for tonight, we're gonna just play one more piece. Uh, this is a block design where you can put eight chords together that have a lot of pairs in common. And if you kind of rhyme the pairs, you put them the first and the third chord have the same pair and the second, uh, fourth chords and whatever, you kind of rhyme the pairs in such a way that uh, when you get to the uh, fourth measure, you finish a quatrain that seems to have rhymed with what went before. So um, I continued with uh, many sets of uh, eight chords that uh, seemed to have a lot of common pairs in common and made this piece, quatrains, which is going to be the end of our concert. And the first time I played the, the, the piece for you, uh, every fourth bar, you, you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's and true, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and don't know why. It reminds me of what Gilbert Delors said about your music. What did Gilbert Delors it's, say? It's um, 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 the, 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 the meeting between um, um, rationality, uh, the mechanic and humor. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Delors is a yeah. special sensati, and he loves the score yeah. divertissement, which he mm -hmm. thinks is very amusing because they're little machines that yeah, turn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of like uh, a, a, a little uh, yeah, animated uh, comics. <laughs> uh, you, the, the rabbit is going like a machine, and he's funny that way. Anyway, uh, I don't know if this, you'll find this funny or not, but let's listen to the quatrains as poetry.
Thank you. We need to, to thank uh, a lot of people tonight, especially David Temper, who's been doing the camera and the sound technicians and everything. A wonderful uh, man and an old friend that I appreciate a lot. And of course, all the mathematicians whose names I've already uh, mentioned. And of course, all the people who are out there listening somewhere <laughs> and watching and uh, maybe asking questions. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. If there are, uh, the, somebody is on the, the uh, chat box there and, and can tell me if there's any questions that we need to answer. How do you what? I, how do you transfer, transfer the Oh, the, the, the scores. Well, there's interesting, and there, there's a, a, a very clever uh, uh, software called LilyPond, which is free, and, but very difficult to learn. You have to be a real programmer. Uh, and I never learned it. At, at my age, I'm too old to learn new programs. But uh, I have uh, a colleague, um, uh, uh, Valentin Villeneuve, who is also my webmaster for Edition 75, and he's very good with Lillipop, and he has done several scores where he can just program the numbers and it comes out beautiful music. But I still work with Finale, where you have to plug in the notes uh, note by note, but it makes beautiful scores too. It just takes uh, longer and you and you make mistakes because it's human errors with every note. And uh, uh, there's no, you can't just uh, feed the, uh, the numbers into, into the program. But uh, I make, do a lot on paper too. Sometimes I just read off the numbers and write them on music paper in the old fashioned way <laughs> while I'm uh, taking it then to the piano and deciding uh, so for the, uh, by ear, for example, I had to just write the mm. chords out and go to the piano and start trying to put them in groups on paper. Because um, you can't take the, you can't have a piano and a computer at the same time. Uh, but uh, that's okay. We don't need more questions. Mm. I, uh, yes, <laughs> peut-être juste, en tout cas, là je vais le dire en français puis tu vas pouvoir traduire, mais... Voilà, que depuis le mois de juin, donc Tom, Tom m'envoie de nouvelles pièces sur ce, sur ce cycle. Donc vous en avez eu un petit aperçu ce soir. Et on espère bien pouvoir jouer euh, l'intégralité du ah cycle oui. 12, The 12 Years Later. Peut-être en, en diptyque avec le, le cycle original 12. Donc dès qu'on dès qu sera un petit peu sorti de, de l'étrange situation qu'on qu traverse tous en ce moment. Donc... Euh, Tenez-vous euh, informé sur le site de l'Ensemble Offrande, par exemple, ou auprès du Baden Kelfer. Euh, mais normalement, donc, on, on espère bien pouvoir donner euh, bientôt euh, l'intégralité du site. Oui, il dit qu'il faut que nous puissions avoir la chose complète prête pour un temps. Et un jour, nous allons pouvoir faire des concerts dans les concerts de vrais concerts, avec des publics vrais, et ça sera magnifique. Et puis, probablement d'autres pianistes vont vouloir jouer cette musique aussi. And we can do real concerts um, with or without the narration and explanation. I think the music will stand so well by itself, too. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, oh, I was sick that night. I need to uh, give you the podcast. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to arrange the podcast, at least not immediately. We'll see how that works down the line. But uh, the important thing is just that uh, uh, we get the score out and that uh, it can be uh, performed in real concert halls by real pianists with real publics um, <laughs> further in the future. This is a real public tonight, uh, I'm sorry. But small, we're, we're, we're limited with the confinement uh, period. But uh, thank you for coming, those of you, five of you in the audience. Merci beaucoup. Merci.